our speaker is Steve Mabbott and Stuart. Stuart. Sorry. <laughs> my note, my note, Stuart, and I have actually called you Stuart so far. <laughs> but my note says Stuart. Stuart Mabbott, and he, Stuart's going to be talking on wildlife and wildlife gardening. So over to Stuart. Thank you. The uh, I heard it mentioned just now. Nobody was probably gardening today. <laughs> Me and, me and Alan were. <laughs> we were in Oxford getting completely drenched this afternoon before we came here. And uh, the interesting thing was, it's a small world. We were over at Yarnton Nurseries, just outside of Oxford. And uh, outside, there was a van saying, uh, Highworth Lions Club. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought, well, that was this morning, a small world. Um, I haven't done one of these talks for a while. And there will be a bit of a challenge for two reasons. One because I haven't done one for a while. And two, because uh, I, I was diagnosed with very, very aggressive rheumatoid arthritis. And the medication I'm on, the, one of the main side effects, it leaves me very foggy. And I get very forgetful. So sometimes these talks go off into a whole <laughs> different area. And I need warm water to keep me going through the evening. So when I uh, run out, I'll give you a shout. Otherwise I seize up. We are here. Alan, myself, Ross the cameraman, we're here to basically connect people with nature. Everything we do is about connecting people with nature. We have to work out what our role is in the ecosystem, nationally, locally, worldwide. And it, it's about valuing diversity. Now who here enjoys making jigsaws? Why do you enjoy making a jigsaw? What keeps you engaged? Getting the pieces together. Getting the pieces together. <laughs> Any other reasons? Completing the picture. Completing the picture. Wildlife gardening is a giant jigsaw. If you enjoy a jigsaw in your front room, it's exactly the same thing. You're building a picture. And that's all wildlife gardening is. Now, I don't actually produce a list of plants that people can go home and grow. Because every garden is different. And if I go produce one list of plants, one, they may not grow in your garden, and two, if everybody grows the same plants, it's a monoculture, it's as bad as what's going on out in the countryside. It's all about diversity. Does this make a difference? This is the 117th talk we've done. Can you believe that? 117. <laughs> and we can't even remember the last one. Um, <laughs> does it make a difference, me sitting here talking to you? I don't know, that's up to you. I'm going to give you the information and it's up to you to make it real. Our obsession with controlling our gardens is a reflection on our obsession with trying to control the world around us. And we're never going to win that battle, ever. I've tried. Now, in um, this printout, the first picture is of a lady who... Now this may come out back to front, this, this uh, booklet, because I, I printed it off and my mum stapled them <laughs> back to front. Anyway, there's a lady here just sat in the countryside enjoying it for what it is, just looking at it. We need to do more of that. We get busy in our gardens, but we don't give it enough looking at and enjoying. We just get caught up in it. Challenge three. Are you hearing or are you actually listening? Are you seeing or are you actually looking? Are you feeling or are you touching? Are you sniffing or are you really smelling? Or are you eating or are you really tasting? This is about really engaging deeply with your gardens. So tomorrow, maybe have a walk around your garden if it's dry. Um, if it isn't, take an umbrella. And try and just take some photographs of what's in your garden. Because it will really begin to open your eyes to the stuff you're walking past. You know, it gives you even more enjoyment. 